History has proven to us time and time again the importance of having patent law. Many instances exist in which someone's idea was stolen because it was not properly patented. Several billion dollar companies have been involved in an intellectual property scandal, constantly having to demonstrate the power of original ideas and whether any inventor really has them or not in the first place. Along with a bit of internet help and a research, we began to see that the most famous inventors of all time, some credited with the invention of important products, simply were not the original inventors. Here are seven famous inventions that were stolen or credited to the wrong person. Elon Musk and a Tesla. When you think of Tesla, Elon Musk comes to mind immediately. A lot of people globally think that Tesla is founded by South African billionaire Musk. However, not many know that Tesla had two founders and none of them is Elon Musk. The California-based electric automaker was founded in July 2003 by two people named Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tarpening as Tesla Motors. The company's name is actually a tribute to inventor and electrical engineer Nikola Tesla. It was only in 2004 when Musk came into the picture. In an interview with CNBC, the founders revealed that they first met with Musk at a gathering for Mars Society members and bonded through their shared love of space exploration. This was even before Musk had started his rocket company SpaceX. Musk could see the potential in it from early on and invested a huge amount of money into the company. This was such a big contribution that the company name started being associated with Musk more than its founders, which they probably don't mind, but who knows? Anyway, it isn't as simple as this. Since Musk invested very early on in the company with his investment, he became the chairman of the board of directors. Eventually, a legal battle ensued and now he is allowed to call himself the co-founder. Lego The go-to toy for children across the globe, Lego amassed record revenues of around $5.7 billion in 2019. Ole Kirk Christiansen, the founder of the planet-conquering Danish company, got the idea for his company's trademark bricks in 1904-6 after he was shown a demo of a plastic molding machine. The device was churning out plastic bricks designed by British firm Kittacraft, owned by British guy Hilary Fisher Page, which launched its bribe plaques interlocking building cubes in the late 1940s. He legally patented a plastic building block. The LEGO people were intrigued and they began working on their own plastic bricks based on that patented design. The Kittycraft block is immediately recognizable as a Lego block. You look at a Kittycraft patent from the late 40s and be certain you were looking at a Lego patent. But Lego just took the design without ever getting in touch with Paige. Over the years they refined it, the official birth of what is really the modern Lego came in 1958, when they added the hollow tubes on the underside to help with interlocking, but the design remains taken from Kittycraft. Paige's daughter has said her father died before finding out about Lego, and certainly before it became one of the Jebberdock Toys brands on Earth. Ironically, Lego has since become an aggressive litigator against brands it sees as stealing its designs. Travis Kalanick and Uber Uber changed our lives in more ways than one and has been widely perceived as Travis Kalanick's idea. In 2006, entrepreneur Kevin Halpern was secretly working on an idea for a mobile taxi hailing service called Celeride. Halpern claims that only a few people were aware of his plans for Celeride, and one of them was Kalanick. At the time, Halpern says that both he and Kalanick were renting office space from mutual friend. Halpern claims that Kalanick created an exact replica of Celeride and called it Uber, and is suing Kalanick, Camp, and two early investors, Bill Trenchard and Bill Gurley, for misappropriation of trade secrets, conversion, illegally using someone else's idea, and breach of contract. Halpert is asking for compensatory damages, claiming in the lawsuit that his injuries are in excess of $1 billion. Steve Jobs The first name that springs to mind when anyone says Apple is Steve Jobs. If you thought Steve Jobs invented the Apple II, the Macintosh, the iPod, iTunes, the iPad, and various other profoundly successful and influential products, you'd be wrong. Because Jobs didn't invent them, he merely integrated them. If you have been down this rabbit hole, you probably know this already, it was Steve Wozniak who actually made the Apple computer. On March 1, 1976, Wozniak completed the basic design of the Apple I computer. He alone designed the hardware, circuit board designs, and operating system for the computer. Wozniak originally offered the design to HP while working there, but was denied by the company on five occasions. Steve Wozniak was done with what became the Apple I before he ever met Steve Jobs. During one of these meetings, Jobs had a look at the computer and gauged its potential. Jobs then advised Wozniak to start a business of their own to build and sell bare printed circuit boards of the Apple I. Wozniak, at first skeptical, was later convinced by Jobs that even if they were not successful, they could at least say to their grandchildren that they had had their own company. After a lot of going back and forth, the two came together 
and along with Ronald Wayne formed the Apple Computer Company on April 1, 1976. Steve Jobs famously said in 1996, For example, I mean, Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. And we have, you know, always been shameless about stealing great ideas. But on the other hand, Apple has sued a lot of companies for allegedly copying or stealing its intellectual property over the past three decades. In 1988, Apple sued Microsoft and HP for copyright infringement over the similarities of Windows and New Wave to the graphical interface of the Macintosh and Lisa. I'm going to destroy Android because it's a stolen product. I'm willing to go thermonuclear war on this. Thomas Edison and the Light Bulb Thomas Alva Edison is a name we learn early on in life, and understandably so. He invented the light bulb. But did he? By the time Edison had started working on the bulb as we know it, many other people had already prepared the structure and figured out the functioning of various parts of the bulb. So, it's not like it was his idea exclusively. What he did do was find the right metal rod to be used in the bulb. Everything else was basically a copy of the invention of another man named Joseph Swan, who eventually found a better, more commercially viable rod. But by then, Edison had already filed for the patent and gotten his hands on it. The history of the light bulb shows the process, often complicated, of the invention and how, in most cases, the credit is not granted to those who deserve it. While Thomas Edison was a brilliant inventor, he did not invent the light bulb. Conversely, along with other inventors you've probably never heard of, Heinrich Goebel probably invented it after trying to sell the device to Edison in 1854. Edison did not see anything useful at the time. But shortly after Goebbels' death, he bought the patent for his widow at an extremely low price and claimed to have invented the product. Alexander Graham Bell Alexander Graham Bell is credited with being the inventor of the telephone since his patent and demonstrations for an apparatus designed for transmitting vocal or other sounds telegraphically, causing electrical undulations, were successful. There is a lot of controversy and intrigue surrounding the invention of the telephone. There have been court cases, books, and articles generated about the subject. Of course, Alexander Graham Bell is the father of the telephone. After all, it was his design that was first patented, however, he was not the first inventor to come up with the idea of a talking telegraph. Antonio Mucci, an Italian immigrant, began developing the design of a talking telegraph or telephone in 1849. In 1871, he filed a caveat for his design of a talking telegraph. Due to hardships, Mucci could not renew his caveat. His role in the invention of the telephone was overlooked until the United States House of Representatives passed a resolution on June 11, 2002, honoring Mucci's contributions and work. You can read the resolution on congress.gov. Guglielmo Marconi and the radio Again, the problem with Marconi's claim for the patent was that his invention was almost entirely based on the work of Nikola Tesla as previously discussed. Tesla made the Tesla coil in 1891 and was already working on making a device to transmit radio waves when his lab burned to the ground. By the time he got back on his feet, Marconi already started with a public display of his work between 1895 and 1897. Marconi filed for the patent for inventing the radio and was turned down multiple times because credit for very similar work was already given to Tesla. However, this decision was taken back and he was declared the inventor of the radio eventually in 1904. To be honest, it does seem fair that the person who comes up with the most practical device to use a certain technology gets the credit for its invention. However, for it to count as an invention, there has to be enough novelty in the product, which in the case of Mark Rene's radio was missing. He was using as many as 17 patents by Tesla at one point. 